Hi, I'm Nathan with Holston Gases. Today, I want to talk about tungsten contamination and how to prevent tungsten contamination from improper torch setup, consumable selection, and gas flow rates. So there's a lot to talk about, so let's get started. So tungsten is a metal that has a super high melting point, somewhere around 6,100 degrees. So the tungsten is exposed to temperatures from the welding arc around 5,000 to 5,500 degrees while welding. Now, when tungsten is exposed to atmosphere at these elevated temperatures or exposed to oxygen at these elevated temperatures, it'll become oxidized and therefore it's contaminated. And so there's some ways that we can prevent this from happening by just setting up our TIG torch and our TIG process properly. So if we were going to make a list of the different causes of tungsten or electrode contamination, at the top of the list we would find improper flow rate, either too high or too low of a flow, wrong cup size for the application, wrong tungsten stick out, how far the tungsten is physically sticking out of the cup, contaminated shielding gas, or wrong gas. As an example, perhaps somebody's using a MIG gas for TIG welding, uh, leaky hose, leaky fitting, inadequate post flow settings, or improper weld termination. All these are very common causes of contaminated tungsten. So let's start talking about flow rates. There's several different flow rates for several different types of cup sizes. The cup size largely influences where to set the flow rate. So there are many charts out there that are available from different manufacturers, whether it's the machine manufacturer, whether it's the consumable manufacturer, but nonetheless there's a lot of good information that as to where to get a good starting point for your gas flow rate and cup size. Now remember these are just general settings. There's a lot that can change where you end up actually setting your flow rate. Whether your uh, electrode is sticking out further out of the cup than what's recommended for certain applications. Maybe you're using helium in your gas mixture which is much lighter than air so it requires a higher flow rate typically 30 to 50 percent more cubic feet per hour than 100 percent argon or maybe you're using a gas lens versus a standard collet body. But let's take a closer look at these different consumables and explain to you what's the difference on them. So here's a look at several different types of consumable setups for uh, TIG welding. The first one over here on the right is just a standard collet body. The standard collet body has only about four to six holes drilled out in it that allows the gas to come out and be directed towards the weld. When you're using a setup like this, typically it requires a slightly higher flow rate than, say, a gas lens. The disadvantage of this type of setup is that the flow rate is typically, or can be, turbulent if the flow is too high. And so we got to be careful at how large of a cup that we select when using one of these. Um, through my experience, I have found that a small cup, like a number six or a number five, or even a number seven works okay with that. But if you get much larger, like say this number 10 cup right here, you'll find that the gas is coming out in a turbulent manner and it can cause some uh, electrode contamination. Especially if you're trying to stick the electrode out further out of the cup than what's recommended. Next is a gas lens. We've got two different types of gas lenses right here. These are just your standard uh, gas lenses that can replace the collet, the standard collet body. They work the same way as a collet body with regard to holding your tungsten, except that you'll notice that on these, on this setup, there's there's a screen, and that screen kind of diffuses the gas and allows it to come out in a very uh, what's called a laminar flow. And this will allow you to stick your tungsten out further out of the cup than what you could with a standard collet body, also providing a better shield for your weld and also protecting your tungsten while it is sticking out further than normal. And then lastly we have this type of kind of fancy gas lens or gas saver that's made by CK. I really like it a lot because it provides excellent gas uh, shielding, allows you to stick your tungsten out in some cases on this big cup maybe up to an inch or over um, away from uh, the outlet of the nozzle and also they're clear so it helps you see the arc in some situations. So those are a look at several different types of uh, a gas cups and by the way if you're using a gas cup like this the recommended flow rate depending on how far you have your tungsten sticking out might be as high as 40 cubic feet per hour maybe 45. So now I want to demonstrate what might happen if you have your tungsten sticking too far out of your cup uh, with the right flow rate 
And let's see how much oxidation is present on this freshly sharpened tungsten. And so you can see how the extreme point of the tungsten is oxidized and dull and gray. And while we were welding, it actually spit a little bit due to the inadequate shielding because of too small of a cup and too large of a tungsten stick out. And so now with the same flow rate, but a gas saver or gas lens and the same tungsten stick out, we'll do the same test and we'll inspect and compare the tungstens. So you can easily see how the tungsten on the right versus the tungsten on the left is much cleaner, maintained its shape very well, maintained its color very well, and so it's going to produce a higher quality weld and a more stable arc for a longer period of time. And so when you get in a situation where you need to stick the tungsten out of the cup to get access, it's always better to use a gas lens. So that should raise a few questions as to how far can we stick the tungsten outside of the gas cup. And so if we're using a standard collet body or standard consumables, then we want to stick it out no more than three tungsten diameters outside of the gas cup to make sure that we don't uh, contaminate our tungsten. If we're using a gas lens, then we can get away with six times the diameter of the tungsten out of the gas cup. So the further that you stick the tungsten out of the gas cup, you're going to need to use more gas flow than what is rec recommended for a standard setup. So another cause of contaminated tungsten would be an improper or inadequate post flow. So a general rule says that for every 10 amps of welding current, we're going to need one second of post flow. So we could either use the auto set feature on the power source if it's, if it's got it available, or we can select how many seconds we want the gas to flow after we extinguish the arc. And this is important for two reasons. Firstly, we want to be sure that we protect the tungsten uh, from contamination so it has adequate uh, argon or inert shielding while it's cooling. Um, and secondly, we want to be able to cool the, uh, uh, shield the crater while it's cooling. If we take the shielding gas away from the crater of the weld, especially on stainless or titanium, we'll find that it will badly oxidize if it's still above 300 degrees or so um, and there is no argon shielding and it's exposed to the atmosphere. So let's take a closer look at the uh, post flow setting here on this Dynasty 350. So on the, on the Dynasty 350 we have a uh, quite a range of post flow settings and so I'm going to show you how to set that right now. So we're going to select the gas function until the post flow lights up. We can select auto where the machine decides what the post flow is for the welding amperage. But if we're doing something unique where we have the uh, tungsten sticking out an excessive amount or we have a, a material we're welding on where we really need good post flow to shield the, the crater of the weld or the termination of the weld, we can make our own selection up to 50 seconds. But I'm going to select 10 seconds because we're going to weld at about 100 amps and that's one amp, I mean one second for every 10 amps. So here you can see that the tungsten is still bright and shiny as if I just sharpened it and I weld, welded about a two or three inch uh, fillet weld there on quarter inch stainless steel. Now I'm going to weld at 100 amps for the same amount of time, but I have a five second post flow and we'll look at the difference in the tungsten. And so now we can see just after a few a seconds less of post flow, uh, we've got a tungsten that is now the tip has turned blue and deep purple and that's evidence of oxidation and not enough post flow. So at the end of the day, no matter where you set it, if when you get done welding, the, no matter what the setup is and your tungsten is blue or purple, that's indication that there could be inadequate post flow. So then just adjust the post flow settings accordingly. So another cause of the tungsten contamination is just being a little careless with the torch after we get done terminating the weld. What I mean by that is sometimes we have post flow set right, we have all the setup correct, but when we get done with the weld, we quickly move on to the next weld while the tungsten is trying to absorb the post flow, while the post flow is doing its job. And so what happens is we move the torch around too quickly and we'll disturb the shielding gas that's uh, there to shield the tungsten and the weld crater and 
will get a contaminated tungsten from doing that. And this often happens when we're not using a remote control uh, to turn on or off the uh, welding output, such as in lift art. So in summary, just remember that it's important to be aware that we can only have so much of a tungsten stick out of the gas cup depending on what consumable setup we have and some gas lenses allow you to stick your tungsten out further than a standard collet body. Also remember that there's certain flow rates for certain gas cup sizes. The smaller the gas cup, the lower the flow rate. The higher the gas cup, the larger, I mean I'm sorry, the larger the gas cup, the higher the flow rate. Also if you have your tungsten sticking out further out of the gas cup, you need more gas flow. So remember that and also remember that it's important to have the correct post flow and at the end of the day if when we get done welding and our tungsten is contaminated perhaps we don't have enough post flow time uh, programmed into our machine for the application and then lastly just be aware that when we terminate a weld if we're not using a remote or really in any situation we don't want to be too erratic with the torch because our tungsten could become contaminated because we're disturbing the shielding gas flow out of the torch um, that's there to provide shielding for the weld puddle and for the tungsten. I recommend flow rates and consumable setups. Don't be afraid to call your local Holston Gases distributor and somebody would be very happy to help you. Thank you again for watching.